If you didn't worry enough about seeing us on the roads, now you've got to look up into the skies as well, because we are using these drones to try and target dangerous driving on our roads in Devon and Cornwall. Welcome to North Devon and we're here today as part of the April thematic on two wheels. What we're doing is we're up here engaging with motorcyclists but also we've got the drone over there as well which we'll show you in a minute. The drone flies up, it can scan all the roads around for I think it's around five six mile radius and we can see bikes and things coming in and how they're riding and then if we want to talk to them we can go out we can stop them bring them in here and then we can show them everything that we've got here. Of particular interest will probably be that bike there to any of our riders that are watching so Harves is going to show you all around his new bike there we'll show you the crash bike we'll show you the drones and we'll show you everything that we're doing here and hopefully some good footage as well let's go see what all my biker buddies got to say about it come on Right, welcome to Chris from the drone team. Chris is just going to give us a few pointers around this particular drone and why we use this as opposed to your little 500 pound one that anyone could go to the shops and buy. So Chris, what is the main difference between this one and something that I could go to the shop and buy? First of all, the, the 500 pound drones you're talking about are incredibly capable and so many people do use them to great effect. For us, we just need that little bit of extra capability, particularly around weather resistance, wind resistance and longevity in the air. So being able to stay up for a little bit longer than your average drone. Also our camera, has to be of a, a much higher quality, particularly in zoom, and we do want the thermal. All these things add weight, and the more weight, the, the bigger the aircraft needs to be, the more battery, and so on. Hence the reason we, we end up with something that's significantly larger than the smaller ones. So is this specifically designed for emergency services? It is, yeah, and, and it's been designed with them in mind. So it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of, a, of a, a more expensive cinematic drone, but it has exactly what we need, and we use it to great effect. So how much would this be? This is around about 20 to 25,000 pounds. So it's quite um, an expensive bit of kit. It, it is, but if you consider how much other assets may cost, um, how quickly we can resolve situations and issues, it saves money every day. So today we're using it specifically to target dangerous driving on the roads. In the normal way, what would you use the drone for? Missing people, things like that? Absolutely, yeah. Our, our primary role is certainly um, to, to look for missing people, uh, vulnerable missing people, and we do that to great effect. Um, but we also have other roles, giving situational awareness to, to commanders at, at large events, football for example, and uh, firearms incidents. Uh, the list goes on. Show me your hands! It's used every day, day in, day out. Hello, I'm Harves. Uh, I'm one of the Devon and Cornwall Police's motorcyclists. I'm a police motorcycle instructor and I also uh, part of the motorcycle VIP team. My job as motorcycle casualty reduction officer is exactly that. We need to reduce the casualties from what we had last year where 187 motorcyclists unfortunately were seriously injured. We had 16 fatalities. The machine that we've got today, the M1000RR, it's going to be used as an engagement tool. I want motorcyclists to come and speak to me. We can pass over the safety message. I want to try and get motorcyclists into uh, educational programs, i.e. further advanced training. The idea is not to uh, prosecute it's more about engagement and education. Oh, how sweet. Yay! Aww. High five. Meet you there in 10. More like five. So James, we couldn't possibly attend a road safety event without saying hello to you. So firstly, how are you? Uh, yeah, very good, mate. Thank you very Fantastic. much. Happy Easter. As you know, this week is Motorcycle Safety Week, uh, and we're here today to support in the police under Vision Zero Southwest, just trying to raise awareness uh, to all the motorcyclists. This is uh, the first nice weekend that we've probably had this year. Uh, a lot of motorcyclists are coming out on day rides. We've spoken to a lot of that come from out of area as well. Just trying to make them aware that where we are now is one of Devon and Cornwall's high harm routes. So as you can see from this motorcycle here, involved in a collision a number of years ago on the A38 between, uh, well, heading down towards Bodmin. Uh, the biker unfortunately came off his bike, but as you can see, he had the correct clothing on, he had the correct levers on. Now these aren't 
rated to the standard that they are of, of the standard nowadays. However, the levers have taken a brunt of the impact and not his skin. It goes to show though, I mean, important equipment's obviously good, it's worth investing in it. But we're using amazing technology today, aren't we, with the drones? Oh, the drone's fantastic. It's going to fly so high. As you can see. The view that it's got. The drone's up there somewhere. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, not just like fantastic technology that they've got with the, with the drones, but just simple things as well. So we've got the Green Dot card. So the Green Dot is a, is a national scheme where police, fire, ambulance are all aware of it. And it's just a, something simple where you put the green sticker on the side of your helmet somewhere on the outside and therefore any emergency services attending know full well that inside there's the card, it's got your details on it, your next of kin, should, it, should the worst happen and, they cut and you're unresponsive, they can contact your next of kin. It also says about your medication, so therefore okay. if you're on any certain medication. If you're diabetic or something, then yeah, yeah they know. And the, yeah. and the ambulance, the paramedics arrive first of all, and they're just about to administer some sort of drug, and they go, actually no, we can't because that conflicts with the medication that they're on. It's, it's all really good information, just, just, you know, something nice and simple, just a green sticker, let alone, you know, the drones that we've got that we're working with today. No, I think it's a great idea, I mean, James, we've got. as always. It's lovely to have you on the channel. Thank you very much, George. We'll see each nice other regularly, I'm sure, with more Learn to Live events. Yeah, we've got it now, mate. There he is. Third from last bend now. He's coming around the last bend now. Hello. Hello, how are you doing, all right? Firstly, your car is a car that I would love to own. I recognise you. Yeah, you probably do. Yeah, the yeah. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know why I've stopped you then. Yeah, you like GTRs. I do like GTRs, <laughs> but that's not the reason I've stopped you. Why have I stopped you? Probably lack of front number plate. Exactly, lack of front number plate. We've had some really nice feedback, though, haven't we, from members of the public that have either been stopped or just turned up have a question as to what you guys are up to and it seems really positive which is nice yeah yeah largely what we get is positivity um, you know there's always going to be the odd bit of negativity and you know, people think what we do is all about revenue which couldn't be further from the truth you know we, we're being completely open and honest about what we're doing here and we're just trying to say to people look stick to the rules go out and enjoy your ride but stick to the rules because if you do get it wrong it's really going to hurt and quite frankly we're getting fed up of knocking on people's doors and saying that they're not coming home from that ride because uh, that's just a really horrible thing that we have to do. Chris, what's the one bit of advice that you would say give to your fellow motorcyclists who haven't stopped? I think for me it's about sort of planning ahead, you know, if you're going to make an overtake, sometimes don't follow the car too close, you know, drop back a little bit, open up your vision and um, yeah, you know, plan it and don't do it anywhere stupid, really. Absolutely. 100%. There's no rush, basically. That's what I'm trying to get at. And for the doubters out there this morning, you've not been prosecuted, have you? You've, st you've actually voluntarily stopped to speak to us uh, and, uh, and you've taken some advice and, and some words of advice on board, haven't you? Yes, I have. And I got a free snuddy out of it as well. <laughs> so hopefully I'll keep my neck warm.